What a spring we have in stall, and the Cox Plate is one of the great races. The best two minutes in sport. 120 hours to produce this incredible trophy. It's worth $35,000. It was changed to a plate in 1956, and Bruce, it feels appropriate on Wink Stakes Day to talk about the Cox Plate. There's such a connection, Richo and Katie, between the two races. I mean, the obvious ones are Kingston Town and Winks. We've had a whole lot of other horses that have won both, like Might and Power and Sunline, not necessarily in the same year. His Kingston Town is a four-year-old, so this was his ninth consecutive win. He was first up. He wins the Wink, Wink Stakes in a hand canter. So that's the first of his three Wink Stakes, the Warwick, as it was at the time. And this is where Kingston Town can't win. The champ still might get up. You know, Bill's famous call when he got up to win his third Cox Plate. It was just extraordinary. So he did the 3-3. Three, three. Here's Winks. So she'd won, this is 26 straight wins for her. Her 30th victory when she wins this Warwick Stakes, or the Wink Stakes as it was, but it was named after her when she won it for the third time. And then she goes on to win the fourth Cox Plate against Ben Battle and creates all the history in the world. An amazing connection, Richo and Katie, between this race, which is the first of our Group 1s that comes up so early in the season, only been a Group 1 for four or five years, and the mighty Cox Plate. It is remarkable, mm. isn't it? You see all those performances in the Wink Stakes and they go on to win Cox Plates uh, in a couple of months' time. That's right. And we're going to see some of the contenders yeah. today. And of course, Animo and Profondo and the like. So it's so exciting, isn't it? Well, maybe there's a contender across the ditch, if you don't Ooh. mind. Uh, La Creek is a fascinating horse from New Zealand. La Creek burst to the front. Oh, the filly looks set for victory. Look at her, put a space on them. La Creek and the Everdale Giddies all clear. She is a superstar. We were very, we were lucky actually. We didn't have to purchase a filly. So when we were originally training a number of years ago, we had a very good owner called John Casson, and we raced La Creek's dam, um, Destiny Cove, with him. And when we took a break from racing, he sort of put his horses elsewhere. But as soon as we came back, this was the only filly that he didn't really have. A, um, had planned for at that time, so we went and had a look at her and got her broken in, and it's really gone from there. I think her best attribute, she just seems to love what she does. She's quite a dilemma as far as a horse that we know will get over ground, so she has those staying attributes, but she's just got an, an electric and brilliant turn of foot and just tries super hard. So she's won some races by some very big margins um, and, and really quite easily and relatively untouched. So I think she's, I could count on probably one hand the amount of time she's actually been hit behind the saddle. I don't think we went through and underestimated her ability before, but it really wasn't until the Guineas and the Derby time that we realised that she did have quite a following out there. A bit of a cult following as far as people were really on, on her bandwagon and, and, and really did love the horse. So, so that was quite of a neat feeling in itself. We of course feel she, she does deserve the title of, of the best three year old last season. But you know, failing to get that uh, that derby win it's, it's, is what it is. I and mean, we still feel there's the best to come to see if we get. I think that Cox Plate's a very exciting race. It's a pretty intense race. The horse itself has to have a lot of attributes to allow it to, to accomplish that distance on that particular course. I think it's almost the ultimate test of your middle distance horse and generally always a very exciting race, yeah. Always such a great tradition, the New Zealanders in the Cox mm. Plate. You think of Sunline, exactly. uh, who was just absolutely brilliant. So we follow her, she uh, commences in the Tarzino, or does she go to the Golden Eagle as opposed to the Cox Plate? Massive so. respect for the Kiwis when they bring them over. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, especially their jockeys, they were brilliant as well as their horses. Uh, well, uh, hey Lizzie, you've been a bit of a trial perv if you like. You like to keep your eye on what horses are happening in the trials. Who caught your eye? Yeah, there's a few horses that have trialled up really nicely. Probably some obvious ones, but in the Congo, looked as though he's in really good order. He's on a Golden Eagle campaign, and this was his second trial, this preparation, and I thought that he extended really nicely. There's some actually some nice trials in behind. Yes, Baby Yes ran second. Rubenocci, who's up and racing, ran third, and Ravina and Papali were finishing off in behind, but he looks as though he's come back in terrific order. And what about Elation? Uh, how good can this horse be? Well, he can be as good as we expect him to be, obviously, off of his last preparation in Adelaide. He really took it by storm. And what I'm most looking forward to seeing is where Mick Price decides to place him this preparation. Of course, he could potentially go towards the Memsey or there's an opportunity for him to run in a handicap race as well on the same day. But he looked... And Ramwick run and one, building up to the next race being the Group 3 Show County Quality with King of Sparta. It was fantastic winning the Bletchingly. Uh, maybe didn't handle the straight track last start. Uh, he is uh, going to take a power of beating and in his way is going to be showmanship. The uh, super talented former Western Australian uh, that's had his issues, only had 
one start in a couple of years, and that was in a Wan Goom. So uh, showmanship should be uh, really, really uh, hard to beat when it comes to the show county. Not too far away, Bruce. Uh, tell us about Pablo's Pulse. Well, we're looking at the Wink Stakes today and looking at those good horses. We mentioned Kingston Town and Winks a moment ago, Richo, and all those other connections with the Cox Plate. But this race provided the longest price winner in Australian racing feature history. It was a horse called Pablo's Pulse, and I thought to myself, I want to know a bit more about him. Here he is here. He's about to be, well, he led and about to be headed off. So he's $501 in the Warwick Stakes or the Wink Stakes. He's a three-year-old. He's a four-star maiden. On the Thursday, he ran at Gosford and ran sixth in, this, in a race in the, for the Gosford Classic. He runs two days later in the Warwick Stakes. Campaign King's $1.30, runs fourth. Ridden by um, the young fella, Jamie DeBellin, because Ron Duffersey had a crook guts and couldn't ride him a a a an hour before. Uh, Ron, who we know so well. The young bloke that trained him, 22 years of age, out of Newcastle. I mean, it's just beggar's belief. I mean, I couldn't believe anything about him. Never won another race. 500 to 1. He wins the Warwick or the Wink Stakes. The longest prize winner ever in a feature race. And that's the Wink Stakes today. Unbelievable. I wonder what weight he had. Maybe Duff well, couldn't make the weight. No, 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 he was just crook, Duff. He was just crook. He, he's been crook ever since. <laughs> <laughs>